Buongiorno. I'm Joe Emanuele, president of the Italian Community Center. Today we're in northern Wisconsin with family. We are going to go through and make homemade Italian sausage. In just moments we will get started, but take a look at the beautiful scenery behind us and where we are on this beautiful sunny day. Okay, here we are. We're going to get started. Um, this is my brother Tom. How you doing? We're at his house. He's going to assist and guide us through this and get going. Um, what are we starting off with here? This is a... Uh, About eight, nine pound pork butt. It's pretty lean, so we don't really have to trim a lot of fat off of yeah, it. Yeah, looks nice. Yeah. Looks really nice. Yep. yep. So, did you want something to drink? No, not until I put the knife down. When we put the knife down, then maybe I'll All have right, to well, you keep the knife, it. and I'll keep the glass. Right. How's that? So, pretty much what I'm, <laughs> I'm going to start just by All cutting right. this in half and get a little bit of this out of the way. Okay. Uh, I'm doing this the way my grandmother and my mother did this, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that might not do it this way, but we want to keep it uh, yeah, the way we grew up with it. It kind of keeps us connected. Yeah, more that. traditional. And yeah, that. yeah. And it's easy to go to, you know, a place and buy Italian sausage, but sometimes, you know, you, you, you could kind of make this, right, like the, like we want it. You could add yeah. more spice, you could add yeah. more fennel, you could yeah. add more salt, more pepper. You're, you're, you're basically putting it together, and, it, and it's fun. It's, yeah. it's something to do for the holidays. You're not making 80, 90 pounds of this stuff. You're making, what, eight pounds. Right, right. And um, so... So you're, you're slicing this and you're quartering this up, kind of, correct? Yep. Quartering it. I'm, I'm going to just do it like this, and then I'm going to turn it and cut it again. Kind of make it into about one inch square. Okay. Are you cutting with the grain here? Or cutting are we going against. Against the grain. Cutting against. And is yeah. there a reason why we're doing that? Yeah. It, it just breaks down the, you know, the uh, if you have any toughness or gristle in it, and that cutting against the grain, it just helps the whole process go a little better. And, Grinds a lot easier, okay. and besides all that, that's the way my nana told me how to do it. And if I don't do it that way, then uh, I'll start having bad dreams about her. So. <laughs> okay, so what, what what are you cut? What are we cutting out? We're cutting out some fat and things like that. Yeah, and a little stuff bit like of this the stringy stuff. Probably going to get kind of caught up into the grinder, so you want to make sure you get some of that stuff out of there but you know you don't want to cut too much of the fat out right because you want it to be yeah. you don't want it to be too lean because you yeah. want that fat in the sausage yeah. that's gonna boil and give you your juice yep. and your flavor correct that is flavor all right fat is flavor yeah so yeah I mean, once we get through this process here we're gonna we're gonna season it and run it through the grinder once not twice just once and then at that point this is a long process because the way my grandmothers did it and the way my parents did it. So basically, it, this is this is done, right? So I can put this in the pan. You yeah. Kind of get the only it out thing of is, is we don't want bit. your pinky finger in that bowl, so yeah. you gotta. Okay. So a little chunky piece there. We'll, we'll fat, throw we'll on the side here. here. We'll throw it on the side for now, and then we'll, we'll right. look at it later. Thank God for I got the apron. Right. All right. Where's your mask? <laughs> Okay, excellent. So we'll continue to cut this up and get this ready for seasoning. Okay, we got all the meat cut up. We got it cubed, trimmed off some of the excess fat that we uh, felt might have been a little bit too much. So what we do now is we're going to take this meat and we're going to weigh it. And that's going to determine how much we have versus how much spices we're going to put into the right. meat, correct? Yep. Okay, so we're going to take this, we're going to put it on the scale. We zeroed the scale out already to weigh the pan. And we got approximately eight and a quarter pounds. Yeah, call it eight pounds. Call it eight yeah. pounds of meat. So we will start from there and start with our seasoning. And usually it's one teaspoon a pound and... Um, well, well, we'll start off with one teaspoon per pound of fennel. So we, we pre-measured everything here, and uh, we're just going to sprinkle this on here. The fennel we, on. we prefer to use whole fennel seed as opposed to powdered fennel. It's kind of a preference, but... Yeah, back back in the day when I, we were kids, remember that? Doing this with Nana and Dad and Ma? I do. And I uh, we hamming me in the hand with a fork because I, mean, I reached for a piece of fennel. Yeah. Well, we used to, right around, right before Christmas time, we would... Uh, 
make this the, make the Christmas sausage, and this is what we did. It was just kind of a tradition that we yep. did every year. Yep. Um, you know, back in the, back in them days, you didn't have an electric grinder, so what you had to do is we had a hand crank grinder. Yep. So I was my, the cranker for a while. Yeah, was me too. So my dad would be cutting the meat, my grandma would be seasoning it, and my mom, and then you know, then they start putting it into the grinder, and we'd be cranking away and you know, cranking through this. Before that time, back early in my grandmother's, my nana's earlier days, she would actually cut the pork up in tiny little cubes by hand, and then get a funnel and stuff the casing with her thumb. Yeah. She didn't even have a grinder. So yeah. they just, they were workhorses. Where they got that, them, they... that logo from Arm & Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, it's a teaspoon per pound of fennel. We measured it all out. We got eight pounds. We put eight teaspoons of fennel in yep, here. Yep. And that's where we're at. So right. you got to measure your meat once you once you cut it up and trim it. And, and then you calculate what how, many, how much spices you're going to put in there. So I put the eight teaspoons of fennel in here. And now we're going to put one teaspoon of pound per pound of salt. So we want to put the salt in there, sprinkle it in, and then we're going to mix this all up when mm -hmm. we're, we're all done. Yep. And once the salt is in, we're going to do a teaspoon uh, per pound of black pepper. Um, coarse ground black pepper is the best. It's got the most flavor. That's yep. what you kind of want to use. I remember my mom and my nana used whole whole pepper and yeah. they, they they smashed it themselves they would yeah. put it in a towel they would use a rolling pin rolling and pinch and crack big that arms. pepper <laughs> <laughs> and uh so that's for the pepper and then a half a teaspoon per pound of red pepper now this this is kind of optional yeah, yeah. You know, we use the, we, we we do a standard um half a teaspoon a pound gives it a little bit of tang but that's a personal preference right. if, if you want it hotter you put more in of crushed reds if you want it if you want it mild uh, you put less if right. you don't want it hot or tangy at all you basically don't put any in so it's 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 kind of optional but we like to put a little bit of tang in there unless you're like my son and want to clean out your intestines then you put in a whole <laughs> pound, then. exactly yeah, yeah right okay so now we're done with this. All yeah. the seasoning is in. Yeah. Now we want to mix this up real yeah. well. Right. But we want to use a little bit of water. We're going to add some water yeah. to this. Yep. So and water helps melt the salt and just helps the whole mixing process. Hydrates it a little bit. So we got some water. I have some water here, and we put a little bit of wine in. You don't want to overdo it with the wine. And the wine is basically again a preference. Whatever right. kind of wine you want. This mm -hmm. is more of a dry, a table wine, a, a blend, a mixture, a Rosso wine. Right. I feel like Father Tim. Right. Ready to go, give communion. Hi, right. Father Tim, in case right. you're watching this. There you go. Right. So we're going to put a little bit of water in here. And get that, get that going. I'm going to put the wine right in right away. Or yep. Yep. So, and then we're going to do a little bit of wine. My mom wouldn't let my dad put in too much wine, but any kind of wine that was left over, he would drink it. Yeah, Like this. Like that. So we get the wine in there, we got the water, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and now we'll mix it up. Tom? That'd be me. Yeah. I'm the cranker in the mixer right now. <laughs> and I did wash my hands. So we want to kind of mix this thoroughly, and that, that water especially helps melt the salt, kind of mixes everything together here. Of course, after we're done thoroughly mixing this, you know, this is a two-day process because the way they did it is they're going to, they would take it and put it in the refrigerator and let it marinate overnight. Now, a lot of people don't do that, especially if you're in a commercial uh, environment. You, you don't have the time to do that. You just put all the ingredients together and run it through the grinder. But uh, we like to keep that tradition going just because uh, that's the way they did it and we kind of want to keep that going the way they did it but it does add flavor to the sausage anything that's marinated for any amount of time with the spices the spices are able to get into that meat a little bit right um unless so you it, have covid then you lose your taste buds and you don't know anyway so. <laughs> you know so or a smoker that's probably pretty good and and this is basically a foundation of this you can tweak that little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper 
the next day after this is all marinated, you know, you do a little test run with tasting, uh, make a little patty and taste it. And you think you need to add a little bit more, add a little more. Okay, so now this is thoroughly mixed and, uh, you know, ready for marinating. But what we prefer to do, we're only going to grind this one time. We're going to run it through the grinder right now without the casings. It's going to help homogenize a little bit of the, the seasoning and help blend and mix it balanced. And then that's when we put it from that point. We'll put it in the refrigerator. We'll let it sit overnight and we'll let it marinate to the point where we're going to stuff it tomorrow without grinding it and just stuffing it. Okay, so let's get this into the hopper and we're going to start feeding this in. We're going to mix. We got this all seasoned and mixed. So now we're going to take this through the grinder. So let's fire this thing off. There's a reason that we run this through the grinder first. Right, Tom? Yeah, I, you know, it just helps balance out all the seasoning and mix everything before we marinate it. It's not really totally uh, the way we might have done it years ago, just based on hand crank grinders. But over the years, my mother made that little adjustment and she, just, she decided that grinding it first with the seasoning before marinating it just really left a balanced uh, flavor in it before it got stuck. And of course, we didn't grind it again once we stuffed it because we always preferred coarse ground sausage. And again, that's a preference. All right, going pretty good. Almost done here. Get this pan and we put this up in there like so. Oh, that's taken care of. So this grinder works pretty good. It's, it grinds up pretty good compared to a hand crank. Yeah. And it comes out pretty pretty fast. Alright. Okay, we're ready to go. And that is ready for the fridge. And uh it tastes or smells yeah. excellent. You can really smell that fennel. Feels it's really, really good on my joints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is ready for the fridge, and like Tom said, we usually marinate this overnight and just let it let the spices blend into the. A lot of commercial places will say, "Well, you could grind that all up, and then the uh, it'll marinate inside the casing," and that might be true to some point, but. Yeah. Once you put this in the casing, if you feel, and then you test it, you feel that you want more, it needs more salt, or it needs more fennel, or it needs something, you, you're kind of done. It's in the, right, it's in the right. casing. You, you, can't, you can't now add to it anymore. Right. So what we do is we, and what we were brought up to do is, like you said, let this marinate for overnight. And once we do that, we fry up a patty, and now we can test it, see what it tastes like. And if, when we got it where we want it, then we'll put it into the casings. We're, we're gonna put this into the refrigerator and we let this kind of marinate overnight. Uh, it's just something that we do. Our grandparents did it, my, my nana did it, my mom did it, and they just thought that the spices would blend better. Yeah. Okay, so we put that in overnight and obviously we had one preset already. So we're gonna take this one out. And uh, is, this has been marinating overnight. And here we are. So we're ready to go with this, but what we do first here, what are we going to do, Tom? We're going to fry well, this we, up, right? Before we put it in the casings, we want to do that final fake taste test on it. So we just make up a couple of patties, fry them with some nice homemade Italian bread, and taste test it. And if we want to tweak it either way, you know, add a little more salt or a little more this or that, now is the time to do it before we're going to put it into the casing. So this is the taste test part. Okay, we're just going to fry up a little couple of patties here just for a taste test. See how it tastes, see if we want to add something here or there. Um, we just got to have a little willpower that we don't need to have to get before we get it in the casing. Because if it tastes really good, we just keep making patties. Okay, here we are. Look at that. Oh, that looks really, really good. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to test this, make sure it's got enough seasoning in it, before we put it through the grinder or in, and into the casing. Uh, so we're gonna kind of do a taste test. And of course, 
the best way to taste this is with on a sandwich with Italian bread. And we all know, we're all familiar with this guy, and he's been around since the beginning, so. You can't get that stuff up here. That's right, you ain't getting that stuff no, up in Hooterville. Hot dog buns up so, here. This stuff here, I mean, the best combination for a sausage sandwich is Peter Shortino's bread. It's America's finest, and that's what we're going to use. So we cut some bread Amen. up here, and we're going to get a plate. And we're going to put two pieces of bread on there. A little bit of carbohydrate. Yeah, I need a fork. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just take this knife. We'll throw it on there like that. Look at this bread. Man, this bread is just incredible. There's no, it's incredible. Well, I, I, I just prefer man to go to the Yeah, I know, I caught that. Yeah. All right, let's do this. And let's see what we got. He always got the bigger half. Yeah, this is raw. But anyways, oh. it looks good. Mmm. Perfect. What is that? Perfect. Does it need any salt? No. I don't think so. Fennel's good. I really taste the fennel in mm -hmm. it. Pepper. Mmm. Wow. We're ready to stuff. Yeah, we're ready to go. It's good stuff. Good bread. Excellent. Glass of wine. Wow. Another hour. We're gonna be dancing through the tiptoe through the tulips. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We're let's gonna get it on the wine though. We still gotta stuff the sausage yet. Okay. All right. Hey. Okay. Let's uh let's work on a well we're gonna finish these sandwiches up and then finish this glass of wine. And then we're gonna get going and stuffing the sausage into the casing. All right. Okay, we're ready to go here and put it into the casing. We tested it, we tasted it, we fried some up, had a couple of sandwiches, very good. Didn't need any, didn't seem to need any more seasoning. Seems all ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put it, uh, Tom fed the casing onto the tube, and we're ready to go. Fire this thing up, you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's roll. And we're gonna put this in here like this. Okay, got it all in the in the casing. Now we're gonna start to link it, link it together. Kind of spin it around. Go to the next one. Spin it around, and we just keep on going down the line like this. Okay, looks like that's it. We yep. did it. It's all linked up. We got. Uh, now basically what we'll probably do is we'll package it up four to five to a pack, do a, use it in a vacuum sealer and some of it will freeze, some of it will cook. Looks some like it turned out. Some will go in the sauce. Some will go in the sauce, Exa yeah, exactly. So yeah, it looks like that's pretty much it. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for tuning in. It was, it was, you can make it a lot of fun. It was a good time, yep. tastes yep. great, yep. price was right and um, enjoy. Thank you.